You're not my dad! What up, Hope Biscuits? It's your girl Skitten, back at it again. Can I help you? Can I help you? Have you guys, like... You, you see, I just wonder, wanted to steal my whole vibe, you know. Have you guys ever wondered what it's like to have a child? Because <laughs> with with you as my friend, I don't have to wonder. I know. That's not true. Uh, what are some, what are some images? I'm gonna find them. I'm gonna put them up. And I never put this much. I'm never put this much effort into my intros, but I'm gonna do it for and you. You don't need to. Okay. And you don't okay? need to. Images. They're gonna be here. No. Speed. They're no, gonna be right no, here. No. Okay. No. No. Uh, that describe my friend. Gracious, beautiful, amazing, uh, this magnificent. This one right here, in case you can't read it, it says, I think I will cause problems on purpose. <laughs> I have never in my life. That one, okay. That's um, rude. That's rude. This one, down here, okay. This really? one. Really? Yeah. Really? It's going to be right here. Really? Yeah. It's going to be right here. Well, now. Okay, this one says, now. well, now I am not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> that is also her. Those are both her. No, you want to know what's really me? What's like truly me? I'm trying to channel my 900 number. Uh -huh, yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. I just want to take the whole world in my arms. I just want to. I just want to hug it. You know. I Close just... to your bosom. Not when you put it like that. You want to nestle it into your bosom? You can nestle things. I just want to hug it and just tell everybody how much I love them. On your them soft, and... pillowy breasts. I'm so uncomfortable. I want to leave. I want to. I'm going home. I think I hear my mom. I will never get over that person calling you Dr. Chest Rockets. Why would you remind them? Actually, wait. I think I called you Dr. Chest Rockets. They just said that you had chest rockets. So in their defense. It's 2021. When, when will people be nice to me? <laughs> My name has had many iterations. Iterations? Iterations. Iterations. Okay. That's fine. Um, what was I saying now? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I've had a lot of names. It's currently Dr. D. Mm -hmm. And the D today stands for D Disrespect. <laughs> I don't, I don't know where to go. I can't, this is not my house. I can't appropriately flee. We're here today to watch. To cause problems on purpose. <laughs> we are here today to watch Salmonella. Um, I don't know if I've ever shown you a Salmonella video before. Just like, because you said that, it's now whack. I feel like I have. And if I haven't, I should have. No, you don't love me. So, but that's what we're here to watch. So strap in, boys. She bullies me. You love it. <laughs> no, no. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. It's funny, because that's how you dance, too. <laughs> See? Mean to me. She bullies me. Hey kids, let's talk about ones. Fidel Castro. We're all familiar with Castro, right? Dictator of Cuba for the whole second half of the 20th century, main antagonist of the Cuban Missile Crisis, you know. Anyway, this man loves three things. He loves Cuba, he loves communism, and good God does the man love dairy. Yep, you heard me right. The all-powerful dictator of communist Cuba is obsessed with anything related to milk and its derivatives. I drew up a little chart here, right? I call it the Leche Lovin Ladder. At the bottom you got dairy farmers, then you got Ross O'Donovan, then Mr. Bones, then starving babies, and then all the way up at the top here, you got Fidel Castro. Today, I'm going to share a few babies. true stories that illustrate his preoccupation. Okay, the first one isn't really a story so much as a fact, but according to several sources, Castro was known to be able to so eat 18 effect. scoops of ice cream after a meal. That's more than two pints. If that doesn't impress you, then go try mm. it for yourself. Me, I can barely manage a pint and a half on an empty stomach, and Castro's doing it on top of a full meal. But it gets better. Being such an ice cream connoisseur, Castro ordered the construction of an ice cream shop. 
but this isn't your average everyday parlor, not by a long shot. He built a straight up ice cream complex taking what? up an entire city block. This was a piece of Why? modern architecture too, in total contrast to the surrounding slums, Why? all for the sake of ice cream. The place is called Coppelia and it's still open today. Of course, Ooh, Castro's obsession went beyond just personal pleasure. Dairy was so dear to him that it often found its way into diplomatic interactions. What? Like one time, a French diplomat came to visit, so Blue Castro cheese. whips out some Cuban cheese. Specifically, Ooh. though, it was camembert cheese, a variety that France is famous for. Sam, you said it wrong. It's camembert. Ooh. It's camembert cheese. Ho oh, oh. ho. Titty croissant. <laughs> that Tumblr, that Tumblr post lives in my head rent free. Clearly. Clearly. All right. You Whisper know French between my legs. Ho oh, oh, oh. Titty croissant. I'm sorry. It was a good Tumblr post. <laughs> Y'all are too young to remember Tumblr. It's okay. Like, Tumblr still exists, but I just mean, like, the good Tumblr. Good. Apparently. It was good. Good. It was good. I'm gonna just play the this video. The French guy was like, hey, not bad. It's almost as good as the French kind. <laughs> Try it again. I think you'll find it's even better than the French. All right, I wouldn't say that. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Are you disrespecting my cheese in my Wait. house on mm -hmm. my island? No, mm -hmm. I mean, it's good. I just mm -hmm. said the French mm -hmm. kind is better. Maybe if you froggy fucks bathed <laughs> once in a while, you'd be able to taste the cheese instead of your own B.O. Listen, you've got your cigars. We've got our cheese. Live with it. Fine. Fuck Get him, him. It's good cheese. I'm paraphrasing just a okay. little bit, but that's basically that's so how it went cute. down. So already, it's obvious that dairy is. A I know that shit. <laughs> you know why I really enjoyed that is because it gives me big Dr. D energy. Like she was in my on my island. I knew in my I knew office. I was gonna get dragged. Now how my name get into this? Okay. Now so I'd like to point out first of all. I'm not a dairy person. Right, yes. Okay, so mm -hmm. don't disrespect me like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like cheese. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like cheese. Um, secondly, I would not do that, but I also would not disrespect somebody's cheese on their island. In their in, office? In their office. Their cheese. In front of my salad? Never. Homecoming. Great value to Castro. Most exceptional, however, is how this value reflected in his leadership. Naturally, having an entire nation at his disposal, Castro wanted to bolster the Cuban dairy industry as much as possible. Yep. But there mm -hmm. was one problem. Cuba initially had two types of cows called La Reinas and Zebus. La Reinas came <laughs> from the days when Spain ruled Cuba, and Zebus originated from India. Both of these cows are well suited to the Cuban environment, having a very high tolerance right. for heat. However, they don't produce much milk, they're mostly just raised for their meat. So Castro decides to import thousands of Holsteins from Canada. Holsteins are the classic black and white cows, and as we all know, you can juice these guys for days. They are utterly superior. Juice. Only problem is, they're, <laughs> they're used to living in Canada, superior. so when they're plopped down, under the scorching Caribbean oh, sun, no. it's going to stress them out. They're not going to be laughing cows by any means. So as a result, <laughs> Castro's imports still didn't put out enough milk to satisfy his desires. At this point, your average run-of-the-mill dairy queen would have given up. But Castro, he's more than that. He's a dairy dictator. So he ordered right. the construction of a giant air-conditioned complex with the sole purpose of providing a comfortable you know environment for his whole state. Oh, yes. And it helped a little bit, but they were still stressed out. They still weren't putting out at their natural levels. And as you can imagine, Imagine climate controlling an entire facility is very expensive, so Castro was forced to abandon the project. But like the astronaut he is, Castro held on to his dream of finding the Milky Way. So he gathered a team of scientists and farmers and ordered them to breed together the Zebus yes. and the Holsteins yes. in order to produce a heat resistant no. lactose pumping super cow. The breeding efforts were mostly starts. a bust, never producing the bovine master race that Castro longed for. However, there was one exception. Under Castro's program, a single individual was born that met his expectations with flying colors. The cow this was so named weird. Ubre Blanca, Spanish for white udder, and she produced world record breaking volumes of milk, peaking at a <laughs> 110 liters a day. That's more than 29 entire gallons I'm of so lactation. Disgusting. Needless to say, Castro was absolutely euphoric at this isolated success of his. To say he went ballistic would be an understatement. He went intercontinentally ballistic. Like, India hasn't got shit on the levels of cow worship that Castro performed. 
Daily updates were published in the Cuban national newspaper describing Ubre Blanca's health and productivity. And when she died in 1985, Castro commissioned a giant marble statue of the cow in her honor. He also had scientists harvest tissue and egg samples for the sake of preserving her DNA. After Ubre Blanca's death, Castro's plans for the Cuban dairy industry got even more desperate and ridiculous somehow. This is based off of an actual conversation that he had with his team of scientists in 1987. Okay guys, hear me out. What if... We make cows that are the size of dogs, mm -hmm. so that way they can live in people's apartments with them. Uh, Fidel, I, I don't think that's going to work. No, 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 it'll work. You just have to grow grass in the apartment, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can't be serious. Yeah, you just got to put up some fluorescent lights. Bam, little, uh, little, uh, little grazing patch for your doggy cow. You That's are a fucking everywhere. lunatic. And obviously yeah, nothing ever came of that idea. Mm -hmm. And Cuba's dairy industry is still floundering today, sadly. So yeah, if you haven't gotten the picture by now, the dude likes milk. Imagine he's at the birth yeah. of his grandson, right? Ah, what a beautiful baby boy. Oh, no. Ah, Fidel, there's something we need to tell Don't you. Do this. Your grandson, he's lactose intolerant. Prepare the firing squad. <laughs> anyway, there's plenty of other miscellaneous stories surrounding his little preoccupation, like the time the CIA tried to poison his milkshake, so I just decided to highlight a few big ones. Anyway, that's all for today. Till next time, I'm Sam Manila, and thank, Manella, and thank you for watching. The CIA tried to poison his milkshake. But anyways, moving on. I want to watch a video one time with all the failed CIA attempts on Fidel Castro's life. 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 He only has one life. Or does he? Exactly. Just saying. Who's in? I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to leave your reaction requests down in the comments below. It's been so nice having you here. You should come over more often. No. Help. Help, please. They're holding me hostage. <laughs> <laughs> we fed you salmon tacos today. I want to be here Yeah, no, just kidding. Okay, bye, guys. Peace out, hope biscuits. It's skittin' lit. You see? Do you see how it's a wink? And it has 100%. always been a wink. Mm-hmm. 100%. 100%. Always been. I'm feeling judged. <laughs>